Ooh, Lilith. What's up, everybody? Open and great. I'm Diego. Dark this Queen. Time. Dark Queen. What was that? I felt a great disturbance in the force. Dark Queen. As if millions no. of voices Dark suddenly Dark cried Dark out Dark in terror. Dark Dark Queen. Queen. Dark Dark Queen. Dark Queen. Oh, I feel something terrible has happened. Dark. Kwai? Dark Kwai? Dark Kwai. I'm gonna go with Dark Kwai, but I'm probably wrong. Yowza wowza. I'm Dark Kwai, everybody. Here is your reactor, Dark Kwai. Dark Kwai. Here is your body, Dark Kwai. <laughs> I mean, I can't blame her. I've never said my, the name of the channel. Darky? I've never said that before. Have you seen my new gloves before? They're so cute. They're kitty paws. Just like Cora here. Yes. Anyways, we last reacts or Moscow reacted to reactors of the Owl House. And I was featured in that video alongside other great content creators over there. And well, this is actually the Y of the name. And Key is part of, you know, my second name. So and that's how it, it works in Spanish, you know. Thank you so much, Moscow, for that video. Her video is in the description box down below this time we're gonna do a reaction first time watching commentary of the owl house season one episode 11 sense and sensibility yes that's right the owl house is adapting that jane austen novel in 20 minutes how about that sense and insensitivity coming out from episode 10 which was escape from the palace man that was actually an episode that I really, really liked. I think I love it, the more I think about it. And I just love that storyline about the Bad Queen and learning about the lore of the palace men and dealing with Ida as a half owl monster, basically, with King. And I just love the themes that were developed throughout the whole episode. And the more I think about it, the more I love it. And this episode, Sense and Insensitivity, look, guys, there's something about topics of writing and creativity and even Battle of Egos that are, you know, interlinked, all of it, that I just loved in this episode. This episode is great. It's like a it's like a new personal favorite in this show now. And before going in, just a couple things. I want to address this topic about the hidden messages, that there are two types, right? So I've been doing on my own the initials of the names of every episode, and it's like this right now. A witch loses. Yes, I think that could perfectly be Ida losing something, maybe like the palace men or a companion or something. Just maybe. And there's another one which is much more difficult because it's within the episodes, these runes that you have to like decipher. They are sounds of the English alphabet. The thing is that I do not know the runes. I know the IPA alphabet. I do not know the runes though. And starting on episode 13, I want to decipher this secret message. I know the season is about to end and all, but I want to really figure that out of myself. You know, I, I, I really want to solve that puzzle or whatever it is. So I'm going to use this as a reference in order to decipher this secret message and play detective, I guess. And I know a part of the message because of the comments on YouTube and in Patreon as well. So, just so you know, this is what I know so far. So yeah, expect that new section in every Owl House reaction starting episode 13. And last but not least, I've been requested to dress up for, for episode 16, I think it is, for the Owl House. I'm just really curious about that. So, I'll be dressing up for episode 16, I think it is. So, grab a cup of tea and let's watch it. Take them! I demand it as your ruler, the king of demons! Yeah. Why isn't anyone paying attention to me? I'm the rightful overlord, intellectually and such. <laughs> yeah, it's such a such a power to be reckoned with intellectually. So you can also can control your emotions. It's a book fair. Oh wow! Okay, it has to do with books. I love how they all appear like just like in previous episodes. <laughs> that I character, I love her <laughs> so much. Oh, even abomination! Wow, signed by the author. <laughs> Hot romance intrigue hey, session. A chance? I'll let you ride in my hoodie. <laughs> <laughs> my boyfriend for Tartarus from hell? <laughs> Meet and greets and what's that? <laughs> Love Whoa. this. This is paradise for loose. I've always wanted to be a writer. Oh. Writer. How many has to appear here? It would make sense, right? Of course I want to be a witch. I'm from that's kinda impossible. 
So my runner-up dream was to be a writer. The runner-up dream. I can relate to that. John DePlume, most famous writer on the Boiling Isles. I'm gonna have him weed my story. <laughs> and marry me. I too shall enter the competition. No. Really? Oh, God. We work together. It'll be perfect. What an intellectual. My name goes first on the cover. Ping has some real character development. Like he wants the attention, that's the thing, you know? But I really like it. It makes the characters more human, more believable. <laughs> the owl character. Another wrinkle. <laughs> curse is quickening. No. Blackie. Okay, that's gonna be so super paranoid. Ready or die, okay? That is hilarious, Lilith. We discussed? <laughs> the visual, like, humor is off the charts in this episode already. A map to the bloom of eternal youth. I think the Emperor will be very pleased. L that's what Ida needs. Owl lady to join the coven? Oh, Remember wow. Yeah! I'll hail the Emperor! Or the Emperor. The Emperor has a similar curse then, right? Interesting. Interesting. Or... I don't know, taking all the young like elixirs, I don't know, or something like that. Oh, Chibi, surprise when I get there first and get it for myself. Ha! That'll show her who's frail. Way too confident. <laughs> I'm, I want to be so sure. Can't go without a map, of course. Okay, this is the fraud. This is no. This is fraud. No, I don't believe it. A second. We are brainstorming. Every <laughs> idea is a good idea. Uh -huh. <laughs> Oh, I love how Lewis is like actually dedicated and King, of course, King. Maybe that's the first thing Quentin Tarantino thinks. Yeah, I, I think that's the first thing Quentin Tarantino thinks for his movies. Heartbreak with shimmer tears. <laughs> and the main character is, of course, Aww. Aww. Yeah, And my main character is the king. <laughs> the ruler of demons. The main character, he has such a such a protagonist complex. <laughs> Typewriting. <laughs> I, I love her. I love Luz. She speaks so much to me. I need to get back to writing short stories. I actually did this for college, like more than once, like for essays and, and, and short stories as well, like creative writing. I love it. Feels a little unrealistic. <laughs> You're the <laughs> critic. <laughs> Ruler just destroys everything. Think a little romantic tension could help the scene. <laughs> hey, there's more to life than shipping. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't insult shipping in my presence. <laughs> I bet a ton of you felt identified with how Luz reacted and the whole shipping theme. <laughs> she loves some romantic tension, which is definitely foreshadowing for the future, I imagine. No questions. Okay. I said no questions. Hoodie? <gasps> King, come on. You're the worst. Lusora dies? I know, right? What a twist. <laughs> King? Game of Thrones, everybody. <laughs> if this is how you want to win, then maybe you should submit the story on your own. What? That's what you get what when you know? all think heck, about man? yourself. <laughs> you? Learn to collaborate. I love that the typewriter is telling that to the writer. <laughs> to read my literary masterpiece. Anyone brave enough? This is such a great commentary on those writers or artists overall that feel so freaking full of themselves, you know, with their work. Wow. You wrote this? You just process that information in a couple oh. seconds. Let me get you a fruit punch. Ooh, I love punches. <laughs> this is all fraud. I mean, no, no I think he's... No. And your name is... King. More of a rank than a name. I loved your story. I don't believe you. I want to buy it. Publish it for everyone to read. No, okay. I think that would be basically humiliating. No. Okay, that has to be a reference to cars. <laughs> no, I Get ready to be famous, Mr. King. Yeah, Lucy's sense and Gingis' insensitivity by 100, 200%. Why is this so dramatic? What? <laughs> I love that it 
has hairs. That's so disgusting, but so realistic. Oh god, and I love the pose of I love that the demon child. Oh god. Oh god. The visual humor of this episode, I can't. Spend money on my thing I wrote. <laughs> This is the king of demons. This is the overlord you wanted to be. Oh my! Always good to meet minions. I mean fans. Minions. You're my inspiration. Oh. I would feel like that for certain filmmakers, for sure. Like, read my script. Ooh, Lilith. What happened to you? Oh. What happened to you, Lilith? You look so good. I'm here to save the bloom of eternal youth from the likes of you. And I'm gonna get there before you. <laughs> ah, no, you won't! Is it actually real? Is it actually real what the other guy just gave to Ida? Like, he just wanted to watch the world burn. I became a blockbuster writer superstar. Oh, God. You're right. It's me. Me! Do you want to touch my scarf? <laughs> this is a commentary on Hollywood, right? There can be a lot of egos. My publisher is throwing a huge party for my book. And I, uh... I'd like for you to be there. Mm. Oh. Oh, that hurts, right? Be that way, I guess. <laughs> Malus has such a good heart, though. Girl, you don't need him. <laughs> but I don't want to be mad at him either. We don't want to be mad at him either or frustrated. <laughs> oh, God. Fame can really box you in, you know? Uh, speaking of, <laughs> how's your second book come out? I love his body language. Or finished, rulers reach two. And now he's gonna tell him that it sucks, right? This is truly all Of course, yes, I knew it. Truly <laughs> awful, but I'm a best selling writer. Oh, he's gonna have so much self doubt now, right? Pushing that theme of self doubt. Oh, lose. I can't write without Lose. Lose. I can't Learning write without her, King. Just realize, realize, come on, come to your senses. I really need your help with my next book. Huh? Apparently, I can't write my daring works of genius without rebelling against your gushy fantasy slot. <laughs> Excuse me? I absolutely love that line. <laughs> righty, righty, clock's a ticking. Of course, he's gonna feel mad, right? Yes, of course. Writing for you after you made fun of all my ideas? Yeah, because it would be using her. Congratulations on all your hard-earned success. Oh. Wow, that's feels like something Amity would totally say. <laughs> Saving her sister. I wasn't certain that you'd save me. Stow it. Ah, we might fight, but come Stow on. Sister. There's a sister love between you. you down, it's, gonna be me. it's the emperor who's a real villain, right? Is that the blossom for eternal youth. The bloom of eternal bloom, youth. I mean. Alright, back off. That baby's mine. Ah. Ida and King are so similar in this episode. <laughs> I'll show you. It's an illusion. <laughs> okay, no, it was actually a trap. For both Lilith and Ida? Wow, the both storylines are complete parallel of each other. I love the writing in this episode. I hear you're an aspiring. Uh, yeah. No, what? If it's disappointing in any way, I will spend every day of my life trying <laughs> it. That's a lot of people with Last of Us Part Two and a bunch of other movies and yeah. <laughs> I can't write without without your writing partner. <gasps> King. Okay, that's what the serpent literally said. Box you in. The dialogue is so good. You gotta get me out. No. With her? Let her go. King, save the day. Come on. Some of the best books were written in literal crunch time. That's a mentality that contributes to burnout and unrealistic expectations. <laughs> The freaking commentary right there, the social commentary. And that speaks so much to today's world because the adrenaline and feel more and more pressure and just everything is crunch time. Everything, everything. You want it like this. Everything. It's so stressful. It's all about deadlines. Oh, <gasps> John the Bloom, no. All the other writers.
This is a mother freaking villain right here. What the frick? My story, but it's all hugging and crying. I can't <laughs> put my name on that. King. <laughs> Stop it. You can't compromise. Aww. All I wanted was to write a dumb story with my friend. I lose. I want to hug you so much. This celebrity is as close as I'll ever get to my dream. It all went to my head, and I hurt you. I'm sorry. Being with you is one of my favorite parts of this dream. The difference between f being full of yourself because for fame and celebrity and all versus actual passion. What if I told you the blue Ugh. never existed at all? What and are you? I have led you to my nest. I'll suck all the life out of you to satisfy processing. Boiling Isles are completely insane. Hard not to admire the tenacity. <laughs> Good entrance. But that outfit. <laughs> they both mock this guy. <laughs> Complete opposite to the dynamic with the serpent and losing king. I absolutely love it. It's, uh, it's such a great twist. Spare us. Woe to us whose fates are sealed. Both together have to be a force to be reckoned with. And look at this guy. This is like legit terrifying puppet master. Faster than I expected. The miracle of teamwork. <laughs> is he actually gonna like it? This is much more gushy than your last. Ah. Skip to the finale because it is quite a payoff. <laughs> How stories really rely on payoff. Great commentary on that as well. What is this all about? Light spell. Oh. <laughs> Great day off. <laughs> King, the contract. Just scarf, go. Okay, that's the other part of the payoff. Come on, let's go. Yes, let's go. This is how you repay me. This is. <laughs> of course, of course. This is the writers, the artists against those executives, the ones that are all about the money, the ones that are all about. Ah. Uh. Legit, like genuine fan. On my way back here for you to weed my story. Oh, oh. Okay, that's actually so sweet. Ugh. No. I read this. Will you go so I can annihilate them in peace? Of course. <laughs> he's actually gonna love it, right? Like he's gonna love this. <laughs> it actually moved him. I can make you a star. Really? Wait a minute. <laughs> King. Did he actually mean that though? Did he, did he actually love it, right? It's the future. I don't want her to be like a cube. <laughs> Look at the other ones. Can I just go? <laughs> that was actually such a sweet moment from this little creature. <laughs> You're gonna cart me away to the coven now, are you? Not now, because I want to give you a chance to join on your own. Join me in the Emperor's Coven. That's what she really wanted originally, right? Heal your curse. Ooh. No, I'll heal it on my own terms. I don't want to owe him anything. Ooh. Catch you later, sis. Not if I catch you first. Oh, I love this. This is actually so sweet between them. I'll see you around. Oh, I sense such, like, tragedy between them. You're welcome for the chance to bond. <laughs> <laughs> They actually love each other. Lilith doesn't actually want to do this by force, like out of hate for her sisters. She actually loves her sister. And Ida wants to join the coven, actually, right? Nothing a bit of apple blood in a good book can't mend. <laughs> Fox? Nope, I don't know nothing about. <laughs> What's a book? Good night! <laughs> what the? Girl, you do not want to know. <laughs> I love how the typewriter dreaded to be interacting with King, to have that story written by King. <laughs> the artist versus the studio executive kind of uh, commentary, social commentary comparison. And the sister bond over here and the artists going against each other and have to go with, you know, learn teamwork, learn to collaborate. This is personally one of my favorite episodes of the season so far. So that was episode 11 of one of the Owl House Sense and Insensitivity. First of all, I freaking love the title. It makes so much sense. It completely fits. You could say like sense is like, you know, the, the overall goal for these characters in order to behave properly and in order to properly 
achieve their goals if they want to survive even come to your senses and in sensitivity i think it would be for both ida and king it actually really fits them in this episode and I love how both grow in this episode. I love the commentary over here about ego and about just thinking about yourself the whole time and how that can compromise your relationship with, with something that really means to you, whether it is your sister, your sibling, or your friend trying to do some really exciting and unique experience with you. You just throw it away, just like King was doing, writing this book and just literally literally insulting loose i love it was directed though it was written it was so clear that both storylines were clear parallels to each other but it actually thematically ties very well the group the main group and how much loose is actually i might say the light for this group that sense that can bring that stability for this group loose showing that idealistic mindset an actual good human being and a good artist, a good collaborator. I love it. I love the whole social commentary with, you know, someone like the Serpent being this kind of this studio executive that only thinks about the monetary contribution to that name and to stay relevant, really boxing in those artists, literally boxing in. Like visually, it makes a lot of sense. She speaks so many truths across this episode, especially one by the end. I love it. I really love it. You could clearly see that there is so much, you know, power dynamics between the artists and the ones that only seek money, that only seek that money over the humanity, over the artists, over the work even. That can really corrupt people, just like the serpent, you know, and that can really lead to corrupt artists in this case, in this episode, like King. I love that. I love that social commentary. It speaks so many truths. It totally speaks to that title, Sense and Insensitivity. I love how some of Lou's lines actually mirror Amity in, in, in so many ways. Hard-earned success, you know, the, she told King so sarcastically. The more she behaves like this, the more she defends her her principles, her morals, authentically herself. Like she's going to bring that idealistic and optimistic energy and be that hope, be that light for the friends that she has, for the new family that she has been given. She's also paving the way to have this like, maybe this synergy with Amity in terms of like worldview, in terms of, in terms of attitude. They will form a beautiful friendship. I cannot wait to see more of that. Loses character development. It really surprised me this Ida and Lilith section over here. It was very brief, their interactions, they were great, but I especially love the ending. And I love the reactions between each other about certain lines. Lilith telling Ida, like, I know you want to join the, the Emperor's Coven, and Ida considered it. Lilith was speaking the truth, was speaking the truth to Luz in that weird body swap episode you know actually wanted to join the coven it's actually true when she says i want to do, th do this on my own terms i think she is thinking about directly about luz and king i think as of right now she cares more about about luz and king protecting them than her youth maybe that just may make it as a character even better, even more compelling. The way sh things are shaping up, I suspect that there's gonna be some real family drama with, with Lilith, with Luz and King. Ida thinks she's going to make this crucial decision between going to the coven with her sister or staying with her, her newfound family. I love the way this is building up, this is shaping up, and that is very suspicious. That is extremely suspicious, because why would the Emperor want that? This is like for a collection, or is it actually for himself in order to save the Emperor or something? I love this episode. I love this episode. Every single frame, there's so much humor, there are so many references, there are so many, there's so many things to just pay attention to, and it goes like this. And I love it because it's all background and all, but it's still like a lot of Easter eggs, a lot of visual jokes, the body language of the characters and all. I love it. I actually really love it. This episode for me, it was great. Personally, one of my very favorites of the season so far. And I really want to know your thoughts. Narratively for me, it was very strong surprisingly strong and i'm really looking forward to what's coming next more drama more drama and humor of course involving Luz, king and ida and that'll be it guys thank you so much for watching really hope you enjoyed this video please tell me in the comments what you think about this episode what's your favorite part of this episode and we'll see each other in the next one see ya
want my gloves? Yes, they're kitty. They're paws gloves. Give me, give me, give, give me. 